We want to get to the latest on Tropical Storm Cristobal. I start with this wider uh, imagery because it's just impressive at how large the outflow is, not necessarily circulation. Again, this is all a part of that large Central American gyre we were talking about. Basically, a big spin in the atmosphere with a whole lot of moisture, and all of that is moving northward. Now, we will not likely see this extent of rainfall actually moving toward the northern Gulf Coast because most of the models are in agreement that that dry air that is looping around now on the southern side will start to kind of weaken a lot of the rainfall on the far eastern side. And at some point we're going to see more of a just kind of compact area of moisture moving northward because there is quite a bit of rainfall. Again, not necessarily associated with crystal ball, but kind of this overall pattern that is moving toward the north. You do see some thunderstorm development and as we colorize that you really can clearly see where the activity is developing and not necessarily right around the center. A little flare up here on the northwestern side of the storm, but nothing right around the eastern side. And it may be that as this does move inland, this could be what the structure looks like that we have this big dry slot and then some thunderstorms far off to the east. So that's kind of what I meant when I said it's not a bad thing if the storm does does move right over southeast Louisiana because that could play some of the heavier rains a bit farther to the east. Now, not that we wish it on anyone. Mississippi, Alabama, Florida folks, we don't wish those heavy rains on anyone, but we know what just five inches could do to the city, and we may see in some of those bands 10 to 15 inches of rain. Timing has not changed. Sometime later Sunday afternoon evening, right around perhaps Terrebonne, Barataria Bay moving inland, but again, the center of the storm is not likely where we're going to see some of the strongest wind and heaviest rain. It may be much farther to the east. Where exactly that will be is anyone's guess. So where do those feeder bands start to set up? We're really not going to know until we get into Sunday. As the storm is just about to make landfall, we will begin to see where those bands begin setting up, and that's going to be the greatest threat of any kind of flooding rain. Winds are going to be picking up as well. We will now likely with the storm possibly moving over southeast Louisiana, perhaps right near the center. Some of those winds ex in excess of 40 to 60 miles an hour. I don't foresee sustained winds of 60, but certainly gusting up to that. And by Saturday night, the winds are going to be increasing and at times maybe even gusting up to near tropical storm force Saturday night. So Saturday night, it's going to start to get a little bit noisy outside. The heavier rains moving through later that night and all day Sunday. Monday will still look to be a wet day, but certainly drying out by that point. This is that dry air I was talking about, and it is already rotating on the southern side and now being fed into the center of the storm. That too will will disrupt the circulation. This is never going to be a rapidly intensifying storm. It will be stronger once it gets up to us, but it is not going to just explode in strength and kind of interesting. This is that what I was talking about. That dry air may actually kind of cut off the entire storm and just have this little pocket of moisture that moves up toward the northern Gulf Coast. And certainly we're looking at quite a bit of rainfall across all of southern Louisiana and toward the Florida Panhandle, but it's going to be the big question of where those bands actually set up. Flood watch is in effect for the area with five to seven inches possible over a wide area and some localized higher amounts. And in fact, models are starting to pick up on perhaps some higher amounts along the Mississippi coast. Storm surge as well outside of the levee protection system. So a lot of folks had their phone go off in New Orleans. That is only for the Venetian Isles. Uh, kind of the Fort Pike, uh, Lake St. Catherine areas that would be affected in Orleans Parish.